Yoga Kundalini Upanishad Introduction The Yoga Kundalini Upanishad is the 86th among the 108 Upanishads. It forms part of the Krishna Yajurveda. It deals with an exposition of Hatha and Lambika Yogas. It concludes with an account of the non-qualified Brahman. The non-dual Brahman is the quest of all seekers. Though grouped among the minor Upanishads, the Yoga Kundalini Upanishad is a very important work on Kundalini Yoga. It begins with an analysis of the nature of Chitta. It maintains that samskaras and vasnas on the one hand and prana on the other constitute the causes for the existence of Chitta. If vasnas are controlled, prana is automatically controlled. If prana is controlled, the vasnas are automatically controlled. The Yoga Kundalini Upanishad presents methods for the control of prana. The yogi student does not deal with vasnas. He concerns himself with the techniques of controlling the prana. The three methods given in the Yoga Kundalini Upanishad for the control of prana are Vidhara, Asana and Shakti Chalana. These three methods are fully explained in the first chapter. Light, sweet and nutritious food forms the discipline of Vidhara. The Padmasana and the Vajrasana are two important asanas used by the yogi student. Shakti Chalana is arousing the Kundalini and sending it to the crown of the head. Kundalini can be aroused by a two-fold practice. Saraswati Chalana and the restraint of Prana are the two practices. The rousing of the Saraswati Nadi is Saraswati Chalana. The process, as described in the Yoga Kundalini Upanishad, for arousing Kundalini is simple. When a person exhales, the prana goes out 16 digits. In inhalation it goes in only 12 digits, thus losing 4. The kundalini is aroused if one can inhale prana for 16 digits. This is done by sitting in padmasana and when the prana is flowing through the left nostril and lengthening inwards 4 digits more. By means of this lengthened breath the yogi student should manipulate the Saraswati Nadi and stir up the Kundalini Shakti with all his strength from right to left repeatedly. This process may extend to 3 quarters of an hour. All this has been briefly and yet comprehensively described in the Yoga Kundalini Upanishad. The most important result of shaking the Saraswati Nadi is that it cures the several diseases arising within the belly and cleanses and purifies the system. After the practice of the Sahita Kumbhaka the yogi student is initiated into the Kevala Kumbhaka. These two types of Kumbhaka bring about the complete restraint of the prana. Surya Bheda Kumbhaka, Ujjayi Kumbhaka, Sitli and Bhastrika are the four divisions of the Sahita Kumbhaka. Surya Bheda Kumbhaka destroys the intestinal worms and the four kinds of evils caused by vayu. Ujjayi purifies the body. removes diseases and increases the gastric fire it also removes the heat caused in the head and the phlegm in the throat sitli cools the body it destroys gulma dyspepsia pleha consumption by fever thirst and poison these forms of sahita kumbhaka purify and prepare the entire physiological organism for the arousal of the kundalini shakti and for the experience of the non-dual brahman Apart from bringing a number of wholesome physiological changes, Bhastrika Kumbhaka pierces the three knots or the granthis. The Yoga Kundalini Upanishad then proceeds to prescribe the practice of the three bandhas for the yogi student. The process by which the downward tendency of the apna breath is forced up by the sphincter muscles of the anus is called the mula bandha. By this bandha the apna is raised up. It reaches the sphere of agni or fire. Then the flame of the agni grows long, being blown about by vayu. In a heated state, agni and apna commingle with the prana. This agni is very fierce. Through this fiery agni, there arises in the body the fire that awakens and arouses the kundalini through its radiant heat. The aroused kundalini makes a hissing noise, becomes erect and enters the hole of brahmanadi. The yogins practice this mula bandha daily. In the same of arousing the Saraswati Nadi and the Kundalini Shakti, the other two bandhas, Vis Udyana Bandha and the Jalandhara Bandha, also play the most significant part. 
After giving detailed knowledge of the techniques of the bandhas, the Yoga Kundalini Upanishad explains the number of obstacles the yogic students encounter. The causes of the diseases in the body are seven. One, sleeping during the daytime. Two, late vigils overnight. Three, excess of sexual intercourse. Four, moving amidst crowds. Five, the effect of unwholesome food. Six, checking of the discharge of urine and faces. Seven, laborious mental operations with the prana. The mistake that the yogic student commits is that when diseases attack him, he erroneously attributes the diseases to his practice of yoga. This is the first obstacle in yoga. The yogic student begins to doubt as to the efficacy of the yoga sadhana. This is the second obstacle. Carelessness or a state of confusion is the third obstacle. Indifference or laziness is the fourth obstacle. Sleep is the fifth obstacle and the sixth is the attachment to sense objects. The seventh obstacle is erroneous perception or delusion. The eighth is concern with worldly affairs. The ninth is want of faith. The tenth obstacle to yoga practice is want of the necessary aptitude for grasping the yoga truths. Honest spiritual aspirants should avoid all these obstacles by means of a close investigation and great deliberation. Further on, the Upanishads describe the process and the manner by which the Kundalini is roused and taken to the Sahasrara by piercing through the Granthis. When the awakened Kundalini moves upwards, the shower of nectar flows copiously. The yogi enjoys this which keeps him away from all sensual pleasures. The yogi takes his stand upon the inner reality, the Atman. He enjoys the highest state of spiritual experience. He attains peace and is devoted only to the Atman. By the whole process of the Kundalini Yoga Sadhana, the body of the yogi attains very subtle state of the spiritual consciousness. The yogi who has attained to Samadhi experiences everything as consciousness. The yogi realizes the oneness of the macrocosm and the microcosm. Because the Kundalini Shakti has reached the Sahasrara Kamala or the Thousand Petaled Lotus and has become united with Siva, the yogi enjoys the highest avastha. This is the final beatitude. The chakras are centers of Shakti as vital force. These are the centers of Prana Shakti manifested by Pranavayu in the living body. Those aspirants who aspire to arouse the Kundalini Shakti to enjoy the bliss of union of Siva and Shakti through awakened Kundalini and to gain the accompanying powers or Siddhis should practice Kundalini Yoga. To them, this Yoga Kundalini Upanishad is of great importance. It equips them with a comprehensive knowledge of the methods and processes of the Kundalini Yoga in which the Khetri Mudra stands prominent. The Kundalini Yogi seeks to obtain both Bhukti and Mukti. He attains liberation in and through the world. Janana Yoga is the path of asceticism and liberation. Kundalini Yoga is the path of enjoyment and liberation. The Hatha Yogi seeks a body which shall be as strong as steel, healthy, free from suffering and therefore long-lived. Master of the body, the Yogi is the master of life and death. His shining form enjoys the vitality of youth. He lives as long as he has the will to live and enjoys in the world of forms. His death is the death at will, each chamritu. The yogi should seek the guidance of an expert and skilled guru. The serpent power is the power which is the static support or adhra of the whole body and all its moving pranic forces. The polarity as it exists in and as the body is destroyed by yoga which disturbs the equilibrium of bodily consciousness, which consciousness is the result of the maintenance of these two poles. In the human body the potential pole of energy which is the supreme power is stirred to action. The Shakti is moved upward to unite with the Siva, the quiescent consciousness in the Sasrara. By Pranayam and other yogic processes the static Shakti is affected and becomes dynamic. When completely dynamic, when Kundalini unites with Siva in the Sahasrara, the polarization of the body gives way. The two poles are united in one and there is a state of consciousness called Samadhi. The polarization takes place in the consciousness. 
the body actually continues to exist as an object of observation to others. When the Kundalini ascends, the body of the yogi is maintained by the nectar which flow from the union of Siva and Shakti in Sahasrara. Glory to Mother Kundalini who, through her infinite grace and power, kindly leads the sadhka from chakra to chakra and illumines him and makes him realize his identity with the Supreme Brahman. The Yoga Kundalini Upanishad attaches great importance to the search for and finding of right Guru. It insists upon revering the illumined Guru as God. Guru is one who has full self-illumination. He removes the veil of ignorance in the deluded individuals. The number of realized Gurus may be less in this Kali Yuga when compared with the Satya Yuga, but they are always present to help the aspirants. They are always searching for the proper adhikarins. The Yoga Kundalini Upanishad gives a list of the obstacles to yoga practice. Some take to the practice of yoga, and later on, when they come across some obstacles in the way, they do not know how to proceed further. They do not know how to obviate them. Many are the obstacles, dangers, snares and pitfalls on the spiritual path. Sadhakas may commit many mistakes on the path. A guru who has already trodden the path and reached the goal is very necessary to guide them. One more important thing which you would find in many places in the Yoga Kundalini Upanishad is the Sushumna Nadi. You must have a complete knowledge of this Nadi. Now, a word on Kundalini, the arousal of which is the immediate aim of the Kundalini Yoga. Kundalini, the serpent power or mystic fire is the primordial energy or Shakti that lies dormant or sleeping in the Muladhara Chakra, the center of the body. It is called the serpentine or annular power on account of serpentine form. Chitta and the control of Prana 1. Chitta is the subconscious mind. It is the mind stuff. It is the storehouse of memory. Some skaras or impressions of actions are embedded here. It is one of the four parts of antakarna or inner instruments, viz, mind, intellect, chitta and ahankara or ego. 2. Mind is formed out of wind. So, it is fleeting like the wind. Intellect is formed out of fire. Chitta is formed out of water. Ego is formed out of earth. 3. Chitta has two causes for its existence, viz, vasanas or subtle desires and the vibration of prana. 4. If one of them is controlled, the result is, both of them are controlled. Bithara, asana and shakti chalna. 5. Of these two, viz, prana and vasanas, the student of yoga should control prana by moderate food, mithara, by asanas or yogic postures, and thirdly by shakti chalna. 6. O Gautama I shall explain the nature of these three disciplines. Listen with rapt attention. 7. The yogi should take sweet and nutritious food. He should fill half the stomach with food. He should drink water, one quarter of the stomach. He should leave the fourth quarter of the stomach unfilled in order to propitiate Lord Siva, the patron of the yogins. This is moderation in diet. The Padma and Vajra Asanas 8. Placing of the right foot on the left thigh and the left foot on the right thigh is Padmasana. This posture is the destroyer of all sins. 9. Placing one heel below the Muladhara and the other over it and sitting with the trunk, neck and head in one straight line is the Adamantine posture or the Vajrasana. Mulakanda is the root of the Kanda, the genital organ. The Rousing of the Kundalini 10. A wise yogi should take the Kundalini from the Muladhara to the Sahasrara or the thousand-petaled lotus in the crown of the head. This process is called Shakti Chalna. 11. The Kundalini should pass through the Swadhishtana Chakra, the Manipura Chakra in the navel, the Anatha Chakra in the heart, the Vishuddha Chakra in the throat, and the Agya Chakra between the eyebrows or the Trikuti. 12. Two things are necessary for the practice of Shakti Chalna. One is the Saraswati Chalna and the other is the restraint of Prana or the breath. The Saraswati Chalna 13. Saraswati Chalna is the rousing of the Saraswati Nadi. Saraswati Nadi is situated on the west of the navel among the 14 Nadis. Saraswati is called Arundhati. 
Literally, it means that which helps the performance of good actions. 14. Through this practice of Saraswati Chalna and the restraint of the prana, the Kundalini which is spiral becomes straightened. 15. The Kundalini is roused only by rousing the Saraswati. 16. When prana or the breath is passing through one's idea or the left nostril, one should sit firmly in Padmasana and lengthen in words four digits the Akasha of twelve digits. In exhalation prana goes out 16 digits, and in inhalation it goes in only 12 digits, thus losing 4. But if inhaled for 16 digits then the kundalini is aroused. 17. The wise yogi should bring Saraswati Nadi by means of this lengthened breath and holding firmly together both the ribs near the navel by means of the forefinger and thumbs of both hands one hand on each side, should stir up kundalini with all his strength, from right to left again and again. This stirring may extend over a period of 48 minutes. 18. Then he should draw up a little when Kundalini finds its entry into Sushumna. This is the means by which the Kundalini enters the mouth of Sushumna. 20. The yogic student should also expand navel by compressing the neck. After this, by shaking Saraswati, the prana is sent above to the chest. By the contraction of the neck, Prana goes above from the chest. 21. Saraswati has sound in her womb. She should be thrown into vibration or shaken daily. 22. Merely by shaking Saraswati one is cured of dropsy or jalodra, gulma, a disease of the stomach, pliha, a disease of the spleen, and all other diseases rising within the belly. Varieties of Pranayam 23. Briefly, I will now describe to you Pranayam. Prana is the vayu that moves in the body. The restraint of prana within is known as kumbhaka. 24. Kumbhaka is of two kinds, namely, sahita and kevala. 25. Till he gets kevala, the yogic student should practice sahita. 26. There are four divisions or bhedas. These divisions are, surya, ujjayi, sitli and bhastrika. Sahita Kumbhaka is the Kumbhaka associated with these four. Surya Bheda Kumbhaka 27. Select a place which is pure, beautiful and free from pebbles, thorns, etc. It should be of the length of a bow free from cold, fire and water. To this place, take a pure and pleasant seat which is neither too high nor too low. Upon it, sit in Padmasana. Now, shake or throw into vibration Saraswati. Slowly inhale the breath from outside, through the right nostril, as long as this is comfortable, and exhale it through the left nostril. Exhale after purifying the skull by forcing the breath up. This destroys the four kinds of evils caused by Vayu. It destroys also the intestinal worms. This should be repeated often. It is called Surya Bhena. Ujjay Kumbhaka. 28. Close the mouth. Draw up slowly the breath through both the nostrils. Retain it in the space between the heart and the neck. Then exhale through the left nostril. 29. This removes both the heat caused in the head and the phlegm in the throat. It removes all diseases. It purifies the body and increases the gastric fire. It removes all the evils arising in the nadis, jalodra or dropsy, that is water in the belly, and dhatus. The name for this kumbhaka is ujjayi. It can be practiced even when walking or standing. Sitli kumbhaka. 30. Draw up the breath through the tongue with the hissing sound sa. Retain it as before. Then slowly exhale through both the nostrils. This is called sitli kumbhaka. 31. Sitli kumbhaka cools the body. It destroys gulma or the chronic dyspepsia, liha, a disease of the spleen, consumption, bile, fever, thirst and poison. 32. Sit in Padmasana with belly and neck erect. Close the mouth and exhale through the nostrils. Then inhale a little up to the neck so that the breath will fill the space with noise between the neck and skull. Then exhale in the same way and inhale often and often. Even as the billows of a smith are moved stuffed within with air and then let out, so you should move the air within the body. When you get tired, inhale through the right nostril. 
If the belly is full of vayu, press well the nostrils with all your fingers except the forefinger. Perform kumbhaka and exhale through the left nostril. 33. This removes the inflammation of the throat. It increases the digestive gastric fire within. It enables one to know the kundalini. It produces purity, removes sins, gives pleasure and happiness and destroys phlegm which is the bolt or obstacle to the door at the mouth of Brahmanadi or the Sushumna. 34. It pierces also the three granthis or knots differentiated through the three modes of nature or gunas. The three granthis or knots are Vishnu Granthi, Brahma Granthi and Rudra Granthi. This Kumbhaka is called Bhastrika. The Three Bandhas 35. The yogic student should now practice the Three Bandhas. The Three Bandhas are the Mula Bandha, the Udyana Bandha and the Jalandhara Bandha. 36. Mula Bandha Apna, breath, which has a downward tendency is forced up by the sphincter muscles of the anus. Mula Bandha is the name of this process. 37. When Apna is raised up and reaches the sphere of Agni, fire, then the flame of Agni grows long, being blown about by Vayu. 38. Then, in a heated state, Agni and Apna commingle with the Prana. This Agni is very fiery. Through this there arises in the body the fire that rouses the sleeping Kundalini through its heat. 39. Then this Kundalini makes a hissing noise. It becomes erect like a serpent beaten with a stick and enters the hole of Brahmanadi or the Sushumna. Therefore, the yogins should practice daily Mulabandha often. 40. The Udyana Bandha At the end of the Kumbhaka and at the beginning of expiration, Udyana Bandha should be performed. Because Prana Udyate, or the Prana goes up the Sushumna in this Bandha, the yogins call it Udyana. 41. Sit in the Vajrasna Hold firmly the two toes by the two hands. Then press at the kanda and at the places near the two ankles. Then gradually appear the tana or the thread or the nadi which is on the western side first to udara or the upper part of the abdomen above the navel, then to the heart and then to the neck. When the prana reaches the sandhi or the junction of the navel, slowly it removes the impurities and diseases in the navel. For this reason, this should be practiced frequently. 42. The Jalandhara Bandha This should be practiced at the end of Puraka, after inhalation. This is of the form of contraction of the neck and is an impediment to the passage of Vayu, upwards. 43. The Prana goes through Brahmanadi on the western Tana in the middle, when the neck is contracted at once by bending downwards so that the chin may touch the breast. Assuming the posture, as mentioned before, the yogi should stir up Saraswati and control Prana. How many times Kumbhaka should be practiced? 44. On the first day, Kumbhaka should be practiced four times. 45. It should be done ten times, on the second day, and then five times separately. 46. On the third day, twenty times will be enough. Afterwards Kumbhaka should be practiced with the three bandhas and with an increase of five times each day. The obstacles to the practice of yoga and how to overcome them. 47. 7 are the causes of the diseases in the body. Sleeping during the daytime is the first, late vigils overnight is the second, excess of sexual intercourse the third, moving amidst crowds the fourth. The fifth cause is the effect of unwholesome food. The sixth is the checking of the discharge of urine and feces. The seventh is the laborious mental operation with prana. 48. When attacked by such diseases, the yogi who is afraid of them says, My diseases have arisen from my practices of yoga. Then he will discontinue this practice. 49. The second obstacle to yoga is the doubt as to the efficacy of yoga practice. 50. Third obstacle is carelessness or a state of confusion. 51. The fourth is indifference or laziness. 52. Sleep constitutes the fifth obstacle to yoga practice. 53. The sixth is not leaving the objects of senses. The seventh is the erroneous perception or delusion. 
54. The eighth essential objects or concern with worldly affairs. The ninth is want of faith. The tenth is non-aptitude for understanding of the truths of yoga. The rousing of the kundalini. 55. The intelligent practitioner of yoga should, by means of close investigation and great deliberation, avoid these ten obstacles. 56. With the mind firmly fixed on the truth, the practice of pranayam should be performed daily. Then the mind takes its repose in the sushumna. The prana therefore never moves. 57. When the impurities of the mind are thus removed and prana is absorbed in the sushumna, one becomes a true yogi. 58. When the accumulated impurity, clogging the sushumna nadi, is completely removed and the passage of vital air through the sushumna is effected by performing kevala kumbhaka, the yogi forcibly causes the apna with the downward course to rise upwards by the contraction of the anus, mula bandha. 59. Thus raised up, the apna mixes with agni. Then they go up quickly to the seat of prana. Then, prana and apna uniting with one another, go to kundalini which is called up and asleep. 60. Heated by agni and stirred up by vayu, kundalini stretches its body in the interior of the mouth of the sushumna. The kundalini reaches the sahasrara by piercing through the three knots. 61. The Kundalini pierces through the Brahmagranthi formed of Rajas. It flashes at once like lightning at the mouth of Sushumna. 62. Then Kundalini goes up at once through Vishnugranthi to the heart. Then it goes up through the Rudragranthi and above it to the middle of the eyebrows. 63. Having pierced this place, the Kundalini goes up to the Mandala, sphere, of the moon. It dries up the moisture produced by the moon in the Anatha Chakra, which has 16 petals. 64. Through the speed of prana, when the blood is agitated, it becomes bile from its contact with the sun. Then it goes to the sphere of the moon. Here it becomes of the nature of pure phlegm. 65. When it flows there, how does the blood which is very cold become hot? 66. Since at the same time the intense white form of moon is rapidly heated, the agitated kundalini moves upwards and the shower of nectar flows more copiously. 67. As a result of swallowing this, the chitta of the yogin is kept away from all sensual pleasures. The yogin is exclusively absorbed in the atma partaking of the sacrificial offering called nectar. He takes his stand in his own self. 68. He enjoys this highest state. He becomes devoted to the Atman and attains peace. The dissolution of Prana and others. 69. The Kundalini then goes to the seat of the Sahasrara. It gives up the eight forms of the Prakriti, earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intellect and egoism. 70. After clasping the eye, the mind, the Prana and the others in her embrace, the Kundalini goes to Siva and clasping Siva as well, dissolves herself in the Sahasrara. 71. Thus Raja Shukla or the seminal fluid which rises up, goes to Siva along with Marut or the Vayu. Prana and Apna which are always produced become equal. 72. Prana flows in all things, big and small, describable or indescribable, as fire in gold. The breath also dissolves itself. 73. Born together of the same quality, the prana and the apna also dissolve themselves in the presence of Siva in the Sahasrara. Having reached an equipoise condition, they no longer go up or down. 74. Then the yogi thrives with the prana spread outward in the form of attenuated elements or in the mere remembrance of it, the mind having been reduced to the form of faint impressions and the speech having remained only in the form of recollection. Experiencing everything as consciousness during Samadhi. 76. The body of the yogi attains very subtle state of the pure Brahman. By causing the body made of the elements to be absorbed in a subtle state in the form of the Paramatman or the Supreme Deity, the body of the yogi gives up its impure corporal state. 77. That alone is the truth underlying all things, which is released from the state of non-sentience and is devoid of impurities.
78. That alone which is of the nature of the absolute consciousness, which is of the character of the attribute I of all beings. The Brahman, the subtlest form of that alone, is the truth underlying all things. 79. The release from the notion that the Brahman is qualified, the delusion about the existence or non-existence of anything apart from the Brahman, which should be annihilated, and experience such as these that remain, that the yogi should know as the Brahman. Simultaneously with the drawing of such knowledge of the form of the Atman, the liberation is attained by him. 80. When such is not the case, only all kinds of absurd and impossible notions arise. The ropes are pent and such other absurd notions brought about by delusion take their rise. Absurd notions like the notion which men and women have of silver in the shell of the pearl oyster arise. 81. The yogi should realize the oneness of the Viswatman and others up to the Turiya. He should realize the oneness of the microcosm with the Virat Atman and others, up to the Turiya, of the macrocosm, also of the Linga with the Sutratman, of the Self with the unmanifested state, of the Atman manifested in one Self with the Atman of Consciousness. The Samadhi Yoga 82. The Kundini Sakti is like a thread in the lotus. It is resplendent. It is biting with its mouth, the upper end of its body, at the root of the lotus, the mulakanda or the muladhara. 83. It is in contact with the whole of Brahmanadi of Sushumna, taking hold of its tail with its mouth. 84. Seated in Padmasana, if a person who has accustomed himself to the contraction of his anus, mulabandha, makes the vayu go upwards with the mind intent on kumbhaka, the agni comes to the swadishtana flaming, owing to the blowing of vayu. 85. From the blowing of Vayu and Agni, Kundalini pierces open the Brahm Granthi. It then pierces open the Vishnu Granthi. 86. Then the Kundalini pierces the Rudra Granthi. After that, it pierces all the six lotuses or the plexus. Then the Kundalini Sakti is happy with Siva in Sahasardala Kamala, the thousand petaled lotus. This should be known as the highest avastha or the state. This alone is the giver of final beatitude. Thus ends the first chapter. The Khetri Vidya 1. Now, then, a description of the science called Khetri. 2. He who has duly mastered this science, is freed from old age and death in this world. 3. Knowing this science, O sage, one who is subject to the pains of death, disease and old age, should make his mind firm and practice Khetri. 4. He who has gained a knowledge of the Khetri from books, from the exposition of the meaning of the same, and who has by recourse to its practice, gained a mastery of this science, becomes the destroyer of old age, death and disease, in this world. 5. Such a master, one should approach for shelter. From all points of view, one should look upon him as his guru. 6. The science of Khetri is not easily accessible. Its practice is not easily attainable. Its practice and melana are not accomplished simultaneously. Literally, melana is joining. 7. The key to the science of Khetri is kept a profound secret. The secret is revealed by adepts only at initiation. 8. They do not get melana, who are bent only upon practice. O Brahman, only some get the practice after several births. But, even after hundred births, Melana is not obtained. 9. As a result of having undergone the practice for several births, some yogis get the Melana in some future birth. 10. The yogi attains the Siddhi mentioned in several books, when he gets this Melana from the mouth of the Guru. 11. The state of Siva freed from all rebirth, is achieved when the practitioner gets this Melana from the grasp of the significance presented in the books. 12. This science is, therefore, very difficult to master. Until he gets this science, the ascetic should wander over earth. 13. The ascetic has physical powers or siddhis in his hand, the moment he obtains this science. 14. One should therefore regard as a chuta or Vishnu, any person who imparts this melana. He too should be regarded as a chuta, who gives this science. 
he who teaches the practice should be regarded as siva 15 you have got the signs from me you should not reveal it to others one who knows this science should practice it with all his efforts except to those who deserve it he should give it to none 16 one who is able to teach the divine yoga is the guru to the place where he lives one should go then learn from him the signs of khetri 17 taught well by him one should at first practice it carefully a person will then attain the siddhi of khetri by means of this signs 18 one becomes the lord of khecharas or the devas by joining with khetri shakti vis kundalini shakti by means of this signs of khetri he lives amongst them always the khetri mantra 19 khetri contains the bija or the seed letter khetri bija is spoken of as agni encircled with water it is the abode of the devas or the khecharas the mastery of the siddhi is obtained by this yoga 20 the ninth letter or bija of somansa or the moon face should be pronounced in the reverse order then consider it as the supreme and its beginning as fifth this is said to be kuta horns of the several bhinnas or parts of the moon 21 through the initiation of a guru this which tends to the accomplishment of all yogas should be learned 22 one who recites this 12 times every day will not get even in sleep that maya or illusion which is born in his body and is the source of all vicious deeds 23 to the one who recites this 5 lakhs of times with very great care the signs of khetri will reveal itself for him all obstacles vanish the devas are pleased without doubt the destruction of the grayness of hair and wrinkles valipalita will take place 24 one who has acquired the great signs should practice it constantly otherwise he will not get any siddhi in the path of khetri 25 if in this practice one does not get this nectar like signs he should get it in the beginning of melana and recite it always otherwise one who is without it never gets siddhi 26 no sooner one gets this signs than one should practice it it is then that one will soon get the siddhi 27 the seven syllables harim bhang sam pam fam sam and ksham constitute the khetri mantra the cutting of rinam lingui 28 a nor of the atman having drawn out the tongue from the root of the palate should in accordance with the advice of his guru clear the impurities of the tongue for 7 days 29 he should take a sharp old and cleansed knife which resembles the leaf of the plant snuhi the milkhedge plant and should cut for the space of a hair the freenam lingui he should powder sandhava or the rock salt and patya or the sea salt and apply it to that place 30 on the 7th day he should again cut for the space of a hair thus with great care he should continue it always for the span of 6 months 31 the root of the tongue fixed with veins ceases to be in 6 months then the yogi who knows timely action should encircle with cloth the tip of the tongue the abode of vagishwari or the deity presiding over speech and should draw it up the tongue reaches the brahmanandra 32 o sage again by daily drawing it up for 6 months it comes as far as the middle of the eyebrows and obliquely up to the opening of the ears by gradual practice it goes up to the root of the chin 33 then with ease it goes up to the end of the hair of the head in 3 years it goes up obliquely to sakha some part below the skull and downwards to the well of the throat 34 it occupies brahmanandra in another 3 years without doubt it stops there crosswise it goes up to the top of the head and downwards to the well of the throat gradually it opens the great adamantine door in the head 35 one should perform the six sangas or parts of the khetri bija mantra by pronouncing it in six different intonations in order to attain all the siddhis one should do this 36 
karanyasa or the motions of the fingers and hands in the pronunciation of the mantras should be done gradually karanyasa should never be done all at a time because the body of one who does it all at once will soon decay o best of the sages little by little it should be practiced 37 one should when the tongue goes to the brahmarandra through the outer path place the tongue after moving the bolt of brahma the bolt of brahma cannot be mastered by the devas 38 on doing this with the point of the finger for 3 years the yogi should make the tongue enter within it enters the brahmadwara or hole on entering the brahmadwara one should practice well 39 even without mathana some wise yogis attain siddhi he also accomplishes it without mathana who is versed in khetri mantra one reaps the fruit soon by doing japa and mathana 40 the yogi should restrain his breath in his heart by connecting a wire made of gold silver or iron with the nostrils by means of a thread soaked in milk sitting in a convenient posture with his eyes concentrated between his eyebrows he should perform mathana slowly 41 the state of mathana becomes natural like sleep in children within 6 months it is not advisable to do mathana always it should be done once only in every month the ardha kundalini yoga 42 a yogi should not revolve his tongue in the path 12 years of this practice will surely give the siddhi to the yogi then the yogi perceives the entire universe in his body as not being different from the atman 43 chief of kings this path of the urdhva kundalini or the higher kundalini conquers the macrocosm here ends the second chapter melana mantra 1 melan mantra hrim bhang sam sham fam sam and ksham 2 the lotus born brahma said am a new moon the first day of the lunar fortnight and full moon o shankara which is spoken of as the mantra sign in the first day of lunar fortnight and during new moon and full moon days it should be made firm there is no other way or time sense objects manas and bandhana 3 through passion a person longs for an object he is infatuated with passion for objects these to one should leave the niranjana or the stainless should be sought after all that one thinks is favorable to oneself should be abandoned for the yogin should keep the manas in the midst of shakti and the shakti in the midst of manas he should look into manas by means of manas it is then that he leaves even the highest stage 5 Manas alone is a bindu. It is a cause of creation and preservation. Six, like curd from milk, it is only through manas that bindu is produced. The organ of manas is not that which is situated in the middle of bandhana. Bandhana is there where shakti is between the sun and the moon. The entry into the sukha mandala. Seven, the yogi should stand in the seat of bindu and close the nostrils. having known sushumna and its beda or piercing and making the vayu go in the middle eight after knowing vayu the above mentioned bindu and the sattva prakriti as well as the six chakras one should enter the sphere of happiness sasarara or the sukha mandala the six chakras nine there are six chakras muladhara is in the anus swadhishtana is near the genital organ Manipurka is in the navel. Anatta is in the heart. 10. The Vishuddhi chakra is at the root of the neck. The sixth chakra, the Agya is in the head, between the two eyebrows. 11. After gaining a knowledge of these six mandalas or spheres, one should enter the Sukh mandala, drawing up the vayu and sending it upwards. 12. He becomes one with Brahmanda, the macrocosm who practices thus the control of vayu vayu bindu chitta and chakra should be mastered by him abhyasa and brahma janana 13 through samadhi alone the yogis attain the nectar of equality 14 without the practice of yoga 
the lamp of wisdom does not arise even as the fire latent in the sacrificial wood does not appear without churning 15 the fire in a vessel does not shed light outside but when the vessel is broken its light appears without 16 one's body is called the vessel the seat of that is the light or the fire within when through the words of a guru the body is broken the light of brahmajna becomes resplendent 17 one crosses the subtle body and the ocean of samsara with the guru as the helmsman and through the affinities of abhyasa the four kinds of vak 18 sprouting in para vak power of speech gives forth to leaves in pasinti buds forth in madhyama and blossoms in vakri that vak earlier described reaches the stage of the absorption of sound reversing the above order viz beginning with vakri etc 19 para pasinti madhyama and vakri are the four kinds of vak para is the highest of sounds vakri is the lowest of sounds 20 vak begins from the highest of sounds to the lowest in evolution 21 in involution it takes a reverse order in order to merge in para or the highest subtle sound 22 anyone who thinks that the one who is the great lord of that vak the undifferentiated the illuminator of that vak is the self such a person who thinks over thus is never affected by words high or low good or bad the absorption in parmatman 23 through the absorption of their respective upadhis or vehicles all these in turn are absorbed in the pratyagatma the three aspects of consciousness visva tessa and prajna in man the three virat hiranyadarbha and ishvara in the universe the egg of the universe the egg of man and the seven worlds 24 heated by the fire of janana the egg is absorbed with its karana or cause into parmatman or the universal self it becomes one with parabrahman 25 it is then neither steadiness nor death neither light nor darkness neither describable nor distinguishable that alone remains which is the beingness or the saturday the essential nature of man 26 like a light in a vessel the atman is within the body thus one should think 27 atman is of the dimensions of a thumb it is a light without smoke it is without form it is shining within the body it is undifferentiable and immortal 28 the first three aspects of consciousness refer to the gross subtle and karana bodies of man The second three aspects of consciousness refer to the three bodies of the universe. 29 In his formation man is and appears as an egg even as the universe is and appears as an egg. 30 During the states of waking dreaming and dreamless sleep the vijnana atma which dwells in this body is deluded by maya. 31 But after many births owing to the effect of good karma it wishes to attain its own essential state 32 the inquiry sets in who am i how has this stain of mundane existence come to me in the dreamless sleep what becomes of me who am engaged in business during both the states waking and dreaming 33 the tibhasa is the result of non wisdom it is burnt by the wise thoughts even as a ball of cotton is burnt by fire and also by its own supreme illumination 34 the burning of the outer body is no burning at all 35 pratyagatma is in the dehra akasha or the ether of the heart it obtains when the worldly wisdom is destroyed vijnana and diffuses itself everywhere and in an instant burns the two sheets vijnanamaya and manomaya then it is he himself that shines always within it shines like a light within a vessel 36 till sleep and till death the muni who contemplates thus should be known as a jivan mukta videha mukti 37 he has done what ought to be done therefore he is a fortunate person 38 such a person attains videha mukti having given up even the state of jivan mukti 
39. No sooner the body wears off, than he obtains the emancipation in a decembered state, Videha Mukti. The state, as if of moving in the air, he gains. Nondul Brahman. 40. After that, that alone remains. That is the soundless, the touchless, the formless and the deathless. 41. That is the rasa or the essence. It is eternal and orderless. It is greater than the great, it has neither beginning nor end. It is a permanent, the stainless and the decayless. Thus ends the Yoga Kundalini Upanishad. Kundalini Yoga The yogin who works for liberation does so through Kundalini Yoga which gives both enjoyment and liberation. At every center to which he rouses Kundalini he experiences special form of bliss and gains special powers. Carrying her to Siva at his cerebral center, he enjoys the supreme bliss which in its nature is that of liberation and which when established in permanence is liberation itself on the loosening of spirit and body. Energy, Sakti, polarizes itself into two forms namely, static or potential, Kundalini, dynamic, the working forces of the body as prana, behind all activity there is a static background. This static center in the human body is the center serpent power in the muladhara, root support. This static sakti is affected by pranayam and other yogic processes and becomes dynamic. Thus when completely dynamic that is when kundalini unites with siva in the sasrara the polarization of the body gives way. The two poles are united in one and there is a state of consciousness called samadhi. The polarization, of course, takes place in consciousness. The body actually continues to exist as an object of observation to others. It continues its organic life. But man's consciousness of his body and all other objects is withdrawn because the mind has ceased so far as his consciousness is concerned, the function having been withdrawn into its ground which is consciousness. When awakened, Kundalini Sakti ceases to be a static power which sustains the world consciousness, the content of which is held only so long as she sleeps. And when one set in movement Kundalini is drawing to that other static center in the thousand petaled lotus, Sasrara, to attain union with the Siva consciousness or the consciousness of ecstasy beyond the world of forms. When Kundalini sleeps man is awake to this world. When she wakes he sleeps I loses all consciousness of the world and enters the causal body. In yoga he passes beyond to formless consciousness. Pranayam for awakening Kundalini When you practice the following, concentrate on the Muladhara Chakra at the base of the spinal column which is triangular in form and which is the seat of the Kundalini Sakti. Close the right nostril with your right thumb. Inhale through the left nostril till you count three ohms slowly. Imagine that you are drawing the prana with the atmospheric air. Then close the left nostril with your little and ring fingers of the right hand. Then retain the breath for 12 ohms. Send the current down the spinal column straight into the triangular lotus, the muladhara chakra. Imagine that the nerve current is striking against the lotus and awakening the kundalini. Then slowly exhale through the right nostril counting 6 ohms. Repeat the process from the right nostril as stated above using the same units and having the same imagination and feeling. This pranayam will awaken the kundalini quickly. Do it three times in the morning and three times in the evening. Increase the number and time gradually and cautiously according to your strength and capacity. In this pranayam concentration on the muladhara chakra is the important thing. Kundalini will be awakened quickly if the degree of concentration is intense and if the pranayam is practiced regularly. Kundalini Pranayam In this pranayam, the bhavana is more important than the ratio between puraka, kumbhaka and rechaka. Sit in Padma or Siddha Asana facing the east or the north. After mentally prostrating to the lotus feet of the Satguru and reciting stotras in praise of God and Guru, commence doing this pranayam which will easily lead to the awakening of the Kundalini. Inhale deeply without making any sound. As you inhale, feel that the Kundalini lying dormant in the Muladhara Chakra is awakened and is going up from chakra to chakra. At the conclusion of the Puraka, 
have the bhavana that the kundalini has reached the sahasrara the more vivid the visualization of chakra after chakra the more rapid will be your progress in this sadhana retain the breath for a short while repeat the pranav or your ishta mantra concentrate on the sahasrara chakra feel that by the grace of mother kundalini the darkness of ignorance enveloping your soul has been dispelled feel that your whole being is pervaded by light power and wisdom slowly exhale now and as you exhale feel that the kundalini shakti is gradually descending from the sahasrara and from chakra to chakra to the muladhara chakra now begin the process again it is impossible to extol this wonderful pranayam adequately it is the magic wand for attaining perfection very quickly even a few days practice will convince you of its remarkable glory start from today this very moment may god bless you with joy bliss and immortality lambika yoga practice of khetri mudra is lambika yoga the technique of the mudra is explained below he who practices this mudra will have neither hunger nor thirst he can walk in the sky this yoga is beset with difficulties this is a very difficult yoga it has to be learned under a developed yogi guru who has practiced this yoga for a long time and attained full success it is kept secret by yogis it confers great siddhis or powers it is a great help to control the mind he who has attained success in this mudra will have neither hunger nor thirst he can control his prana quite easily khetri mudra yoni mudra or shanmukhi mudra sambhavinchi mudra aswini mudra maha mudra and yoga mudra are the important mudras among these mudras khetri mudra is the foremost it is the king of the mudras mudra means a seal it puts a seal to the mind and prana mind and prana come under the control of a yogi Khetri mudra consists of two important kriyas viz chhedan and dohan the lower part of the front portion of the tongue the frenum lingua is cut to the extent of a hair's breadth with a sharp knife once in a week afterwards powder of turmeric is dusted over it this is continued for some months this is chhedan afterwards the yogic student applies butter to the tongue and lengthens it daily He draws the tongue in such a way that it is similar to the process of milking the udder of a cow. This is dohan. When the tongue is sufficiently long, it should touch the tip of the nose. The student folds it, takes it back and closes the posterior portion of the nostrils. Now he sits and meditates. The breath stops completely. For some the cutting and the lengthening of the tongue is not necessary. They are born with a long tongue. He who has attained perfection in this mudra becomes a walker in the sky. Queen Chudla had this siddhi or power. He who has purity and other divine virtues, who is free from desire, greed and lust, who is endowed with this passion, discrimination and strong aspiration or longing for liberation will be benefited by the practice of this mudra. The mudra helps the yogi to get himself buried underneath the ground. Yoga I Yoga is a perfect practical system of self culture. Yoga is an exact science. It aims at the harmonious development of the body, the mind and the soul. Yoga is the turning away of the senses from the objective universe and the concentration of the mind within. Yoga is eternal life in the soul or spirit. Yoga aims at controlling the mind and its modifications. The path of yoga is an inner path whose gateway is your heart. Yoga is the discipline of the mind, senses and physical body. Yoga helps in the coordination and control of the subtle forces within the body. Yoga brings in perfection, peace and everlasting happiness. Yoga can help you in your business and in your daily life. You can have calmness of mind at all times by the practice of yoga. You can have restful sleep You can have increased energy, vigor, vitality, longevity and a high standard of health. Yoga transmutes animal nature into divine nature and raises you to the pinnacle of divine glory and splendor.
The practice of yoga will help you to control the emotions and passions and will give you power to resist temptations and to remove the disturbing elements from the mind. It will enable you to keep a balanced mind always and remove fatigue. It will confer on you serenity, calmness and wonderful concentration. It will enable you to hold communion with the Lord and thus attain the summum bonum of existence. If you want to attain success in yoga, you will have to abandon all worldly enjoyments and practice tapas and brahmacharya. You will have to control the mind skillfully and tactfully. You will have to use judicious and intelligent methods to curb it. If you use force, it will become more turbulent and mischievous. It cannot be controlled by force. It will jump and drift away more and more. Those who attempt to control the mind by force are like those who endeavor to bind a furious elephant with a thin silken thread. A guru or preceptor is indispensable for the practice of yoga. The aspirant in the path of yoga should be humble, simple, gentle, refined, tolerant, merciful and kind. If you have a curiosity to get psychic powers, you cannot have success in yoga. Yoga does not consist in sitting cross-legged for six hours or stopping the pulse or beating of the heart or getting oneself buried underneath the ground for a week or a month. Self-sufficiency, impertinence, pride, luxury, name, fame, self-assertive nature, obstinacy, idea of superiority, sensual desires, evil company, laziness, overeating, overwork, too much mixing and too much talking are some of the obstacles in the path of yoga. Admit your faults freely. When you are free from all these evil traits, samadhi or union will come by itself. Practice yam and niyama. Sit comfortably in padma or siddhasana. Restrain the breath. Withdraw the senses. Control the thoughts. Concentrate. Meditate and attain asamprajnata or nirvikalpa samadhi, union with the Supreme Self. May you shine as a brilliant yogi by the practice of yoga. May you enjoy the bliss of eternal. Ideal Yoga Some yogic students think that only he who can fly in the air, walk on the water, and do such other miracles, can be called a yogi. It is a sad mistake. To be peaceful, to be calm, to radiate joy, to have an intense aspiration to realize God, to have the spirit of service and devotion, to be self-controlled, this is real yoga. Flying in the air is not yoga. Why should one aspire to fly like a bird after attaining the human birth? You must have a willing heart to serve everybody and a desire to possess all divine virtues. This is yoga. Your ideal should be to be good and to do good. Be ever willing to share what you have with others. You should have a knowledge of the scriptures, devotion to your preceptor, saints and sages. Even nirvikalpa samadhi is not necessary. Why do you want to get yourself merged in the absolute? Have a small veil of individuality and serve here as Nityasiddhas. Poses divine qualities and move as a divine being on this earth. Aspire not for powers. Powers will come by themselves. Poses all noble virtues. Be free from hatred and malice. Elevate others by your own example. Spread the message of the rishis. Lead a righteous life. Speak the truth. Worship mother as God, father as God, teacher as God, guest as God. Give, but give with modesty. Give with goodwill. Give with love. There is one eternal Atma. One universal consciousness that dwells in the hearts of all. Realize this through aspiration, renunciation, concentration, purification. Control anger. Do not get irritated through misunderstanding. Try to understand everybody. Understand the feelings of others. Bear insult. Bear injury. Be ever intent on the welfare of all. Salvabhuti Terata. You should practice these, not merely study the Brahma Sutras and the Upanishads. The Upanishads should come from your heart through purification, through service. Selfless service is the highest thing on this earth. 
Service will make you divine. Service is divine life. Service is eternal life in God. Service will give you cosmic consciousness, service that is selfless, without attachment. But nobody wants to serve. Everybody wants to be served by others. You will have to kill the ego. You will have to pulverize it, make it a powder. You will have to extract oil from your bones and burn it for six months. Such is the toll, as it were, to progress in the path of self-realization. Be good, do good. This is the essence of the teachings of all scriptures and prophets of the world. Those who want inner life are very few. All are thirsting for happiness, but they do not know where they can get happiness. They search for it in wealth and material possessions. Maya is clever. She never allows people to taste the bliss of an inner life in the Atman. Deluded by her power, man thinks that there is no transcendental realm, that there is nothing beyond the senses. Eat, drink and be merry, this has become the motto of life. The path to the realm of God is open only to those who have got the divine grace. May you all know the true import of yoga and base your life on selfless service to humanity with Atma Bhava and the development of all divine virtues. May you all have sustained aspiration, practice deep meditation and attain self-realization. May you all shine as Nityasidas, radiating joy and peace all round. 10 Commandments for Yoga Students 1. Practice asanas and pranayam in the early morning or 3 hours after food. 2. Offer prayers to Guru and God before commencing the practice. 3. Take sattvic food. Avoid hot, pungent, sour articles of food and stimulants like tea, coffee, etc. 4. Keep a clean room under lock and key. Let it be well ventilated, cool, free from insects and from other sources of disturbance. 5. Observe strict brahmacharya. Avoid unnecessary talks. 6. Reduce your wants. Develop contentment. 7. Take bath before the practice, if that is not possible. Have a wash before and bath at least half an hour after the practice. 8. Sit facing east or north. 9. Be regular and systematic in your practice. 10. Obey your guru implicitly in all respects. Yoga and its consummation. Yoga is the art of uniting the individual soul with the supreme soul, of uniting the Kundalini Sakti line dormant in the Muladhara Chakra with Siva in the Sahasrara Chakra. By convention, all practices that help the attainment of this goal are also called yoga. Vedanta says that the individual soul is enveloped by five sheaths, Annamaya Kosha, the gross body, Pranamaya Kosha, vital sheath, Manomaya Kosha, the mind, Vizlanamaya Kosha, the intellect, and Anandamaya Kosha, the bliss sheath or the ignorance that immediately wails the self, and that the goal of life, viz, self-realization is attained by negating the five sheaths and piercing the veil of ignorance. When do we regard a particular part or organ of the body as perfectly healthy? When we are not made aware of that organ. The ear is in perfect health when we are not aware that that organ exists, if there is pain we are conscious of its presence. In order to transcend the five sheaths, therefore, they must all be free from afflictions. Yoga helps you to do that. The purificatory kriyas of Hatha Yoga and Asanas ensure health of the body and free it from ailments. Pranayam revitalizes the vital sheath. Pratyahara, withdrawal of the rays of the mind and restraining them from flowing outwards, and Dharna, concentration, strengthen the mind. Meditation brings about a happy blending of the intellect and intuition, and the yogi's intelligence becomes intuitive. Samadhi illumines the soul and reveals the self by piercing the veil of ignorance. This is yoga, the perfect system of all-round self-culture. But no one can embark on this noble enterprise without preparing the vessel. Yamnyama or the canons of right conduct ensure this. One who has not controlled his senses, who is not truthful, kind, compassionate and pure, cannot make any progress in sadhana. Energy leaks out through all the avenues of his body. His vital sheath is debilitated.
His mind is completely extroverted. His intellect is dull. His soul is enveloped in dense darkness. Meditation for such a man is only a dream. Therefore I insist on all spiritual aspirants that they should one engage themselves in nishkama karma yoga for self purification and cultivation of virtues and to practice as much japa as possible in order to earn his grace these two karma yoga and bhakti yoga cannot be overemphasized once the senses are controlled and the heart purified control of mind concentration of its rays and meditation become very easy the aspirant would do well to remember the two great watchwords of sadhana a abhyasa unrelenting intense unbroken regular and systematic practice b vairagya dispassion aversion to all sensual enjoyments non attachment to objects of senses to the extent to which the aspirant grows in these two to that extent will his mind want to meditate there will be joy in meditation the mind will look forward to the period of meditation when this condition becomes intense then the mind will be in a constant state of meditation as your hands are engaged in the work of the day the mind will be blissfully detached from the world peacefully witnessing sakshi bhava the play of the senses and the sense objects when you are established in this state you are a perfected yogi You have only to sit and close your eyes you will instantly transcend the five sheaths and merge in the supreme soul your actions will be in tune with the divine will you will have the superhuman powers of intellect mind and body you will never be tired dull or depressed your words will have life transforming power your heart will be full of compassion and love for humanity and all humanity will be drawn towards you You will become a spiritual magnet. You will shine as a yogi, sage and jivan mukta. You are liberated. This is the goal. May God bless you. The gradational ascent of the mind. The chakras are centers of shakti as vital force. In other words, these are centers of prana shakti manifested by pranavayu in the living body, the presiding devatas of which are the names for the universal consciousness as it manifests in the form of these centers. The chakras are not perceptible in the gross senses. Even if they were perceptible in the living body which they help to organize they disappear with the disintegration of organism at death. Purity of mind leads to perfection in yoga. Regulate your conduct when you deal with others. Have no feeling of jealousy towards others. Be compassionate. Do not hate sinners. Be kind to all. Success in yoga will be rapid if you put your maximum energy in your yoga practice. You must have a keen longing for liberation and intense vairagya also. You must be sincere and honest. Intense and constant meditation is necessary for entering into samadhi. The mind of a worldly man with base desires and passions moves in the muladhara and swadhisthana chakras or centers situated near the anus and the reproductive organ respectively. If one's mind becomes purified the mind rises to the manipura chakra or the center in the navel and experiences some power and joy. If the mind becomes more purified It rises to the anatha chakra or center in the heart, experiences bliss and visualizes the effulgent form of the ishta devata or the tutelary deity. When the mind gets highly purified, the meditation and devotion become intense and profound. The mind rises to vishuddha chakra or the center in the throat and experiences more and more powers and bliss. Even when the mind has reached this center, there is possibility for it to come down to the lower centers. When the yogi reaches the agya chakra or the center between the two eyebrows he attains samadhi and realizes the supreme self or brahman There is a slight sense of separateness between the devotee and brahman If he reaches the spiritual center in the brain the sasarara chakra the thousand petal lotus the yogi attains nirvikalpa samadhi or super conscious state he becomes one with the non dual brahman All sense of separateness dissolves 
This is the highest plane of consciousness or supreme asampraṣṇata samādhi. Kundalini unites with Shiva. The yogi may come down to the center in the throat to give instructions to the students and do good to others, Lok Sandarbha. Experiences on awakening of Kundalini. During meditation you behold divine visions, experience divine smell, divine taste, divine touch, hear divine anatta sounds. You receive instructions from God. These indicate that the Kundalini Shakti has been awakened. When there is throbbing in Muladhara, when hair stands on its root, when Udyana, Jalandhara and Mulabandha come involuntarily, know that Kundalini has awakened. When the breath stops without any effort, when Keval Kumbhaka comes by itself without any exertion, know that Kundalini Shakti has become active. When you feel currents of prana rising up to the sahasrara, when you experience bliss, when you repeat om automatically, when there are no thoughts of the world in the mind, know that kundalini shakti has awakened. When, in your meditation, the eyes become fixed on trikuti, the middle of the eyebrows, when the sambhavinchi mudra operates, know that kundalini shakti has become active. When you feel vibrations of prana in different parts inside your body, when you experience jerks like the shocks of electricity, know that kundalini has become active. During meditation when you feel as if there is no body, when your eyelids become closed and do not open in spite of your exertion, when electric-like currents flow up and down the nerves, know that kundalini has awakened. When you meditate, when you get inspiration and insight, when the nature unfolds its secrets to you, all doubts disappear. You understand clearly the meaning of the Vedic texts. Know that kundalini has become active. When your body becomes light like air, when you possess inexhaustible energy for work, know that kundalini has become active. When you get divine intoxication, when you develop power of oration, know that kundalini has awakened. When you involuntarily perform different asanas or poses of yoga without the least pain or fatigue, know that kundalini has become active. When you compose beautiful sublime hymns and poetry involuntarily, know that kundalini has become active. The quintessence of yoga. Yoga is union with the infinite through meditation and samadhi. A yogi is freed from karma or the law of cause and effect, from births and deaths and from the trammels of mind and flesh. The yogi has perfect control over his life forces and mind. He can dematerialize at will. The yogi practices discipline of body and mind. He has control over his body and mind. He meditates on Om. Yoga illumines, renovates and helps the yogi to attain the highest point of perfection. If one awakens his super consciousness, there will be no problems at all. There will be only love, peace, harmony, unity and happiness in this world. Practice Yoga to Prolong Life The practice of yoga lessens and prevents the decay of tissues by increasing the life force and fills the system with abundant energy. By the practice of yoga the blood is charged with abundant oxygen. The brain and spinal centers are rejuvenated. By the practice of yoga, the accumulation of venous blood is stopped. The body is filled with abundant energy. The brain centers and the spinal cord are strengthened and renovated. Memory is improved. Intellect is sharpened. Intuition is developed. How can one who does not know his own body hope to achieve success in yoga? First have a strong, firm and healthy body through the practice of Hatha Yoga and then take to Raza Yoga. Breathing plays an important role in prolonging human life. Therefore, Practice pranayam regularly. A rabbit that breathes very rapidly does not live very long. Practice rhythmic breathing and deep breathing. There are detailed practices in yoga for cleansing of the foot tube, dhati, and the stomach, as simple and effective as cleansing of the teeth. There are methods in yoga, tratka, for strengthening the eyesight and cleansing the nose. People who suffer from overweight, constipation or dyspepsia will specially find this yoga practice very useful. Through the practice of yoga, the evolution of man is quickened. What he can gain in hundreds of births, 
he can gain in one birth through the practice of yoga and attain final emancipation. He can attain longevity and attain perfect health. He can compress in one life the experiences of several hundreds of births. He who practices basti or yoga nimitta never suffers from constipation and other abdominal disorders. Perfection in yoga. A yogi can switch his life currents to and from the senses. He takes the prana and the mind to the sahasrara or the thousand petaled lotus at the crown of the head. He enters into samadhi. He is dead to the world. He experiences super consciousness or nirvikalpa samadhi. He is in blissful union with the Lord. Savikalpa samadhi is subject to time and change. There is Tripati, the seer, sight and seen, or knower, knowledge and knowable. There is some link with prakriti or matter. Savikalpa samadhi cannot give the final emancipation. This is also an obstacle to nirvikalpa samadhi. The aspirant gets false contentment and stops his meditation or sadhana. Hence this is an obstacle to the final or higher realization. Nirvikalpa samadhi alone can burn all samskaras and vasanas in toto. Savikalpa samadhi cannot destroy all samskaras and vasanas. In Savikalpa samadhi the life force or prana of the yogi is withdrawn from the body. The body appears to be dead, motionless and rigid. Breathing is suspended. He is aware of his bodily condition or suspended breath. Nirvikalpa or Nirbija samadhi is timeless, changeless. This is the highest state of samadhi. Double consciousness. In Nirvikalpa samadhi, the yogi's consciousness merges with the absolute consciousness. There is no bodily fixation. In his ordinary waking consciousness, even in the midst of worldly duties, he is in communion with the supreme consciousness. He has double consciousness. The crow has one eyeball, but two sockets. It turns the eyeballs now to one socket and afterwards to the other socket. Even so, the yogi has double consciousness. Wise guidance for sure success. The practice of yoga should be gradual and step by step. Extremes are to be avoided. No sudden and violent methods should be employed. Common sense is an essential part of yoga. Boldness is also equally essential. Fickle-mindedness will not do on the path of yoga. Vacillation and oscillation will retard progress and result in stagnation. Reflect gradually and choose a method. Choose a method and stick to it and persevere in it continuously. This nishtha is necessary. A man who digs a well should not dig a foot here, a foot there, a few feet in another place and then a fourth. If he does this, he will not find water even after digging in 50 places. Once a spot is chosen, he must dig on and on in the same place and lo, he will reach the water. Even so in yoga, one teacher one path one method one master one idea and one pointed faith and devotion all the above make up the secret of success in spiritual life practice of yoga asanas one the practice of yoga asanas helps to prevent disease and maintain a high standard of health vigor and vitality it cures many diseases Two, it is conducive to higher intellectual and spiritual attainment and provides a coordinated system of health for all people. Three, there are as many asanas as there are living creatures. Four, Siddha, Padma, Swastika, Sukha are the four chief meditation postures. Five, Sirshasana, Sarvangasana, Halsana, Paschimottanasana confer wonderful health and cure many diseases. Six. The practice of asanas is always accompanied by pranayam and japa of mantra. Seven. Moderation in diet and observance of brahmacharya are necessary for realizing the maximum benefits of the practice of asanas. A yogi should always avoid fear, anger, laziness, too much sleep or walking, and too much food or fasting. Eight. Regularity in the practice of asanas is of paramount importance. 9 lakhs of people have derived real benefit from the practice of yoga asanas 
Then even in Europe and America many have taken to the practice of yoga asanas. 11 several schools of yoga in the west and india hong kong indonesia australia denmark holland show a record to prove the therapeutic value of the asanas 12 i have written several books on yoga asanas 1 yoga asanas 2 hatha yoga 3 yogic home exercises 4 radiant health through yoga Five practical guide to students of yoga and a number of other books like one easy steps to yoga, two yoga in daily life, three practical lessons in yoga, etc. Contain lessons in yoga asanas and pranayam. Thirteen. This system costs nothing. It is inexpensive. It is simple. It is specially suited for the people of the whole world at large. 14 even women can practice it with great advantage to themselves irrespective of age all can join in the practice of yoga asanas 15 the benefit of yoga asanas should be made available to every family in the whole world doctors bills can be saved 16 ethical culture practice of divine virtues a rigorous discipline of the mind Spiritual culture and meditation are also very necessary for attaining integral perfection. Asanas and pranayams are only a part of yoga.